Okay, <clears throat> now we're on to the second uh, lesson series for BIM, and this time we're dealing with uh, factory production and uh, production drawings. So, in this video, I'm just going to talk about how to create some production drawings directly from the initial uh, concept model that we had from um, from the first series of lessons. So the first thing we need to do is we open up the, um, the concept model <clears throat> and we're going to save a new project and the reason for that is we want to keep the concept model uh, for our quality assurance. So we're going to save it, save a new project and put it in your project folder. I'm just putting it on desktop but you of course will have your filing system set up correctly. So I'm just going to call it Modular Setup Site. So now we have a new project that's uh, an exact duplicate of the original uh, concept model. I'm just going to change some of the project name, project number and so forth in here. You can either th do this through the, uh, the title block or you can go up to uh, manage and manage project parameters and change these details in there and they'll be updated to the to the title blocks. So change the concept. Let me change that to site setup. So now we're going to the 3D view. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to select one of these modules. This is uh, module type B. We go up to the linking file and we choose replace with a new project file. So what Revit is going to do, it's going to export this group, uh, leave it the same as group name so that it retains the same, same name as the module, which means we can easily reinsert it again. And so Revit is going to go and uh, create a new project file that's specifically about only this little module here. So there it is. Once we do that we can close down the overall uh, site drawing and save the changes. If I click on it here you can see that the module that we selected, if I can grab it, isn't a group anymore. It's now a link. So any changes that we make to the linked file will automatically update into this overall file. Let's close that down and uh, save the changes. So then I go and find the uh, new project we've just made. Easy enough, it's just on the desktop, hopefully. There it is, module type B. Open it up. And uh, we have a whole new project that's based around simply this module. If I open up the views to the left, you can see it's slightly different to uh, a normal project. Um, it's only giving us level level uh, views. It's not giving us elevations and so on and so on. It's also not including many of the normal family annotation families. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, to keep the uh, link files as light as possible, so, that, so it doesn't have all the information. Uh, that won't be used, uh, making the drawing heavier. So I'm going to start off by making some elevations just so we can see uh, what the uh, box looks like and try to start, up, start setting up the uh, drawing set. These elevation symbols we can change later on. So there they are. Four elevations. Because the module doesn't have any orientation, it's just a factory drawing. We don't give it a north, south, east, west elevation. We just give it a number. So the next thing we need to do is create some reference levels. Um, we just copy them. But the reason for that is, uh, just like in uh, the overall building, the reference levels gives us the opportunity to uh, control uh, many things automatically that would otherwise have to be moved individually. So it's an efficiency idea. 
uh, that's also a good uh, workflow so that uh, your, your work is, uh, is organized correctly. So I'm just going to copy that up. And I like to give level names that actually have uh, an understandable meaning. Um, you don't have to be complicated about these things. Top of floor, ceiling level, and so on. We can change these afterwards if it makes more sense for a presentation of the drawing. We'll just call this one top of uh, module. So some of these levels are just for guidance, and some of them are actually going to be uh, drawings at the end. So that's also something to consider when you're uh, when you're naming them. So bottom of module. change the scale of that to 1 to 20 just so I have a little bit more detail showing up and I'm just going to get a little number in here just so that there's more organization in the drawing change it back to hidden line to switch off the crop region. So there we have the basis of a, of a drawing. Same thing for the uh, elevation 2A. Switch off the crop region. There we go. And I don't want to repeat this again, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a view template, which is going to take all these settings I can apply them to the, uh, the other elevations in the project. I'll select the next two elevations and apply view template. And there we go, elevation. So if I open that up now, it's already set up. Again, switch off the crop region. We don't want to see that. set up the rest of the floor plans by using the view tool view button and here they are I'm going to give these uh, numbers so that they list in order in the project browser to the left there um, just so I don't get mixed up between them as we go through them because they automatically list in alphabetical order and I want to list them in uh, in order of um, of level um, it's not necessary and it's something that you can change afterwards but it's just so that uh, I have more ease in the, in the workflow I go to top of floor change it to 1 to 20 and we're going to start setting up uh, a structural grid using the grid tool <coughs> so you have a few options as to where you put the grid but it usually makes most sense to put the grid at the, uh, the center of where the structural elements are going to be placed. So I'm basing this uh, this entire module project on a Kingspan metal framing system. So we're going to put the uh, the steel columns in the center of the uh, center of the wall. The reason for that is it's so that the uh, the columns aren't uh, visible in the unit but also so that they're fire protected. So I'm placing them in uh, just in a 
mirror there to copy the grid over. Be the same position. And let's put some horizontal grids in. It's not you don't have to get it completely accurate at this stage. We can always modify the position of the grid after we get them drawn. And you can see that the grids that, that are set up they don't have uh, the usual annotation bubbles at the end because the family is not included in order to save memory. But we can have that later on. Here I'm just clicking on the grid to see what the measurement is. Using the tab key I can uh, rotate between different different elements. And the grid is is exactly in the middle of the wall, but I want it to be in the middle of the the inner layer. I'm just going to grab that dimension and I know the layer is 150 so I'm going to change it to 75 centering the grid on the wall or the inner layer of the wall similarly up here I'm going to mirror and so the grid appears down below and on this side Use tab to select. And we're just going to change No, I think I'll just delete it in the mirror instead. So there we go. Because we've only we've already done it once, we don't need to worry about the position twice. We can mirror it because then the module is symmetrical in that way. Now I'm just going to copy these up. I'm not too worried about the distance between them. Use multiple copy, and I want to divide the module into four bays. But now I need to equalize them so that they're exactly the same. I use the align dimension, create a dimension between the grid elements. And once I've done that and placed it, I get the EQ equals tool. If I click that, then the distances between the, uh, the grid elements are equalized. I'm just going to put on a few more dimensions here so uh, I can see what's going on. So that's three and a half meters. I'm just going to copy that over because the actual module of our layout is 3.75 between elements. I'm going to put that tolerance in there as well, give it its own uh, grid identity. I'm going to mention that up as well. 